Hi guys, welcome to my presentation. Unfortunately, we cannot make it face to face this year and therefore I invited my dear colleagues here to listen to this presentation. It's going to be about Meptire Outdoor. Well, as you can guess from the name Outdoor Map, it's something for the people who love uh, adventure, uh, mostly in the nature. More specific, we are going to talk about this map in a nutshell. Meptile Outdoor is a map for hikers and bikers. The scope of this map does not cover water sports, climbing or other extreme adventures. Uh, also, horse riding and uh, winter sports are not in this map. The main source uh, of information for this page uh, was taken from the OpenStreetMap wiki page about uh, outdoor sports, but also from our own experience, because as you can see from this photo, our team is really into hiking. This photo is from uh, our last trip into the Switzerland. And by the way, uh, we already had a first version of our map over here, and we were testing it live in the terrain. The processing of raw OpenStreetMap data into map tiles is done using uh, OpenMap tiles schema. Uh, we modify it uh, to include hiking related tags. Uh, the full documentation can be found on our website. If you want to learn more about open map tiles, I would recommend you some of our older presentation from previous state of the maps, for instance, the one from 2018 in Milano. The base map has the dim colors to let the paths shine through. Uh, it shows the paths over highways, it shows the nature over cityscape and other stuff. So it's really easy for you to navigate through the terrain, not through the cities. When you start zooming uh, on our map, first you can see the long distance trails. After that, when you zoom in even more, you can see the local trails and the color of each trails is dependent on the color you can see on the ground. For biking, all the trails are represented by the dashed line. And again, uh, you can see more trails when you start to zooming in. On the very high zoom level, you can see the trails which are going from the, let's say, northern Scandinavia uh, through the entire Europe uh, into the southern Italy. But when you really zoom in into the, let's say, zoom level 14 or 15, you can see also the local trails. For points of interest, we are not trying to reinvent the wheel. We are using the icons which are already used in other outdoor maps and which the people can intuitively read. Last but not least for the outdoor map is the terrain. We have two things for the terrain. The first one uh, is the hill shade. The hillshade is based on the RGB terrain, which is a raster tiles. But uh, in fact, you can do much more magic with this. For instance, you can change the orientation of the shadow based on the position of the sun. The other terrain feature we have are the contour lines. They are in vectors and they are rendered in meters, which means each 10 meters, you have one contour line. You can switch them into the feeds. That's really easy in our customized tool. Uh, the labels will change into the, into the feeds and everything will recalculate. Unfortunately, uh, you will not have the nice decimal numbers. So what we are planning right now uh, is to render the entire planet into the feeds. So you will have the really nice decimal numbers for feeds as well. And the topic I already touched a little bit uh, before uh, is the customized tool. Uh, using this tool, you can do whatever you want to do with your map. For instance, uh, you want to make your boots a little bit darker. You want to make your uh, roads a little bit lighter or vice versa. Uh, you can switch on and off layers. That's what you can see on the image on this slide. Uh, here I'm switching the uh, hiking trails, then I'm showing only the biking trails and then I'm 
showing both and then switching everything off. If you are still not happy with these changes, we have also the advanced edit tool where you can do whatever you like, you can do the real magic, you can even add your own data if you like to and create uh, the map which completely fits your needs. By making this map, we experience some difficulties. The first one is the difference uh, between the countries. And by difference, I mean the way the hiking marking is done. Uh, on the image, uh, you can see uh, how we are doing it in the Czech Republic. This is the guidepost from the Czech Republic. Uh, in Czech Republic, each car uh, shows the length uh, of, a, of a trail. So the red trails are the longest, the blue one are a little bit shorter, the green one are even shorter and the shortest are the yellow. But for instance in Switzerland, the yellow track uh, is the easiest one, the red one is the little bit more difficult uh, and the blue one is for the real experienced tourists. Even though we are not showing the difficulty in our maps, uh, we still have it in data. Uh, there is this tag uh, SAC scale, uh, which stands for Swiss Alpine Club uh, scale uh, and their marking. So if you want to do the map uh, based on the Swiss or Italian style, you can still do it. Uh, just go uh, into the advanced edit tool and uh, style the map the way you want. Before I start talking about the slide, please don't get me wrong. Uh, I highly appreciate the work of all of us, and by us I mean also me, because I am an active OpenStreetMap editor, and I am mostly editing things which are related to outdoor uh, stuff, like hiking and uh, marking trails. Uh, but I can see that uh, there are some things which could be improved. Uh, what we saw uh, quite often uh, while making this map was the data incompleteness. In some countries, for instance in Czechia, uh, we are running uh, regularly the checks uh, and if we see uh, there is a gap in our data, uh, then someone with a local expertise uh, try to look at it and fix the problem. But this is not true for the entire world. And it would be really useful if there is uh, some kind of tool uh, which can scale to the entire world and where the uh, local mappers can have a look at it and possibly fix the missing holes or the gaps. Talking about data incompleteness, uh, we also experienced quite a lot that some mapper may be a little bit uh, less experienced, uh, put into the data the name Via Ferrata something. For instance, Via Ferrata Diavolo. But uh, he didn't mark it as Via Ferrata route. So what we did uh, while making this map, uh, we took uh, this Via Ferrata uh, from, from the name and turned it into the Via Ferrata tag. Uh, we also did the same with uh, SAC uh, scale and we again turned it uh, into the hiking route uh, when, wherever it was possible. Uh, it would be really useful uh, if some of the people who are behind these uh, quality tools are listening, uh, if they add uh, some checking uh, on this as well. We also have to adjust orientation of the entire tracks into one direction. The reason is, if there is one road and there is confluence of multiple trails, we always uh, put the trails or we shift it to one side. If you join them together, uh, you will get one beautiful line. On this screenshot from TagInfo, you can see the distribution of hike root relation. And uh, you can see something similar in other tags as well. But uh, here two phenomena are met, and the first one is the distribution of hiking routes. Uh, the Europe is the hiking paradise, as you probably know. 
And the other thing uh, is that Europe has uh, probably the most uh, mappers per square kilometer in the entire world. And if these two things combine together, you will end up with something like this. The Europe is covered almost perfectly, but in other parts, a lot of things is still missing. This is how we built our outdoor map. This map is available on Mapstar Cloud. This is how we create our outdoor map. Uh, it is available on Mapstar Cloud. You can create a free account and start using it today. It can be used in interactive web maps using Meblibre, uh, Cesium, Leaflet or Open Layers. You can use it in mobile devices. I would recommend uh, Meblibre mobile SDK. Or you can use it in desktop GIS software, uh, either via WTMS or alternatively for QGIS users. There is a plugin we released some one year ago. Uh, it's available in the QGIS plugin repository. So that was it. And what about the winter sports? Well, maybe you can see it in the next state of the map. Thank you. Bye.